Hi, I'm Tati. And I'm back with another library book haul. This one is a pretty big book haul, so let's get right into it. First up is Lois Lane Fallout by Gwenda Bond. In this one, Lois Lane is the new girl at Metropolis High, and her journalistic instinct to ask questions brings her and her online friend Smallville Guy onto the trail of a dangerous virtual reality experiment. Next up is Superman Dawnbreaker by Matt De La Pena. Another YA take on Superman. In this one, Clark Kent has always been faster, stronger, and better than everyone around him. And though he hasn't earned his powers, yet it's becoming more difficult to stay in the shadows, especially when people start disappearing in his small town. Next up is She's the Worst by Lauren Spieler. This one is about two sisters, Jen and April, and while Jen is busy with school, the family antique shop, and her boyfriend, April would rather play soccer and hang out with the boy next door. But when April notices that her older sister is sad about staying home for college, she sets out to revive a pact they made as kids and explore the greatest hits of their childhood. Next up is Yoke by Mary H. K. Cho. This is another one about two sisters. In this one, Jane and June are nothing alike. They are estranged from each other and they don't want anything to do with each other until June gets cancer and Jane is the only one who can help her. I'm actually really excited to read these two because I love stories about sisterhood. And the next one is Die For Me by Amy Plum. In this one, after her parents are killed in a car accident, 16-year-old Katie Mercer goes to live with her grandparents in Paris. There, she finds herself drawn to the mysterious and elusive Vincent, who has a dangerous secret. And then we have Screen Queens by Lori Goldstein. In this one, three girls are vying for a summer internship through a startup incubator program. Lucy Cates, a social butterfly and CEO in the making, is ready to both win and party. Maddie Lee is only there to bolster her graphic design portfolio, not to make friends. And Delia Meyer, who taught herself how to code on a hand-me-down computer, but who is also super shy and is not sure if she'll be able to hack Valley Start. Together, the three girls will try to become the only all-female team to ever win. Next up is Fake ID by Lamar Giles. This one is about Eli, a teen in the Witness Protection Program. When Eli's first new friend dies while trying to uncover a conspiracy, Eli finds himself trying to solve a murder mystery. Next up is the Love That Split the World by Emily Henry. And just a heads up, I did find this one a bit hard to explain, so bear with me. In this one, it's Natalie's last summer in her small Kentucky town. It's off to a magical start until she starts seeing the wrong things. They're just momentary glimpses at first, but then her whole town disappears for hours. But then she gets a message that she only has three months to save him. And the next night, under the stadium lights of the high school football field, she meets a beautiful boy named Bo. Next up is Don't Turn Around by Michelle Gagnon. In this one, 16-year-old Noah has been a victim of the system ever since her parents died. Now 16, she uses her hacking skills to stay anonymous and off the grid. But when she wakes up in a warehouse with no memory of how she got there, she starts to wish she had someone on her side. I also picked up Wild Beauty by Anna Marie McLemore. For nearly a century, the No Meal Vines women have tended the grounds of La Pradera, the lush estate gardens that enchant guests from around the world. They've also hidden a tragic legacy. If they fall in love too deeply, their lovers vanish. But then, after generations of vanishings, a strange boy appears in the garden. Next up is Super Fake Love Song by David Yoon. This YA rom-com kicks off with a case of mistaken identity. When Sunny Day, a self-proclaimed total nerd, meets Cyrus So, he can't believe how cool and confident she is. So when Cyrus mistakes Sunny's older brother's Grey's bedroom with its electric guitars and rock poster for Sunny's own, he sort of 
kind of accidentally ends up lying to her and telling her he's the front man of a rock band. Next up we have Letters to the Lost by Bridget Kemmer. Juliet Young always wrote letters to her mother while she was alive, and even after her death she continues to write her letters and leaves them at her grave. Declan Murphy, in the midst of his court-ordered community service at the local cemetery, finds one of these letters and can't resist writing back. And so those were all of the books that I picked up this time around. Let me know what your thoughts are on any of them or all of them in the comments. Also let me know what is the most amount of books you've ever picked up from the library at one time. As you can see, I tend to pick up quite a few. So if you would like to see more, give this video a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye. Notice that before. <laughs> and I did rent all of these books for a very specific video I'll be making sometime in the future. So you can try and figure out what that is. Oh, how do I get it to not be shiny when I have so many lights on? Can you see that? That's pretty cool. That one's pretty cool too. <laughs> Next up is Yoke by Mary H. I know her name. He's a rep brand. <laughs> Lucy Cates is the... Who is she? I don't know. I just read it. Together the... I don't think there's any way for this cover to not be shiny. <laughs> So here is a close. In this one, Juliet Young always wrote letters to her. How do I end up with only hardcovers? I just realized that right now. Bye.